السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وحده وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على من لا نبي بعده وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين My brothers, my sisters, when a child is born, Allah Almighty has chosen that that child and all of us were children comes onto this earth with a blank hard drive. What that means is Allah Almighty has given the child a brain and all the organs, a mind and everything that the child needs to be able to live on earth. But that brain will be filled by the parents or those who are around the child as the child grows up. And Allah has chosen this as a test for the parents as well as later on for those children when they grow older. If Allah wanted, He could have. If Allah wanted, He could have created us with a hard drive that is full of all the apps that are needed throughout our lives. I'm calling it apps, but you know what I mean. Everything you need, you could have come out and said, Salaamu Alaikum. Well, it did happen. With whom? It has happened. With whom? فَأَشَارَتْ إِلَيْهِ قَالُوا كَيْفَ نُكَلِّمُ مَنْ كَانَ فِي الْمَهْدِ صَبِيًّا Maryam alayha salam, Mary, may peace be upon her. She pointed to the child who was just born, Jesus, may peace be upon him, Isa alayhi salam. And she said, nothing. She just pointed to the child. When they asked, what have you done? She pointed to the child. They said, how could we speak to someone who is in a cradle, a little baby? What did he say miraculously? قَالَ إِنِّي عَبْدُ اللَّهِ آتَانِيَ الْكِتَابَ وَجَعَلَنِي نَبِيًّا Part of the statement, he says, I am Abdullah, I am the worshipper of Allah. Allah Almighty has granted me the revelation and made me a prophet. That was miraculous, but that is not normal. That is beyond what is normal. It is miraculous. It was chosen by Allah. Adam alayhi salam before that was created by Allah in his proper shape and form. And he already had the height and the width and all the organs and everything. And Allah blew the soul into Adam alayhi salam. And Allah says, وَعَلَّمَ آدَمَ الْأَسْمَاءَ كُلَّهَا We taught Adam the names of everything. We taught him every, when he was created. Obviously, he wasn't born. He was created in adulthood. He already spoke. Why? Because like I called it the hard drive. The hard drive, the brain was already full of what? Whatever was needed. Allah says, we, we gave him. Is it impossible for Allah to do that for you and I? The answer is no, he can do it. But he has chosen not to. And the reason is, like I said, مَا مِنْ مَوْلُودٍ إِلَّا وَيُولَدُ عَلَى الْفِطْرَةِ فَأَبَوَاهُ يُهَوِّدَانِهِ أَوْ يُنَصِّرَانِهِ أَوْ يُمَجِّسَانِهِ The plan of Allah, He creates the child upon what is known as nature, natural, fitra. Fitra is nature. If you leave a child uncontaminated in the desert or in a land where there is no involvement of anyone else, if it was possible for that child to survive and the child survived, the child would have grown up recognizing Allah and staying away from bad and that which is harmful and evil on its own. Because Allah has created you upon nature. And it would worship Allah alone. Because naturally a person is inclined. If it is uncontaminated. To turn towards the maker. To acknowledge there is a supreme deity. But the problem we face is from a very young age. Like the hadith says. The child is born upon nature. But the parents are guilty. Of making the child inclined this way or that way. If it is negative. And they would be rewarded if it is positive. So in the very early stages, Allah has given you as a parent 
that bit of responsibility that you take care of this child and teach it goodness. The first words are from you. Now, the reason I say this is today, we've realized how people come into the child's lives and or the children's lives and take away from the parents that duty and responsibility. What happens? I'm not talking about your environment in your home within yourself. You might have Quran. You might have taught the child Allah, Allah, which is beautiful. First words, look at what the child is saying. Allah, Allah, etc. So beautiful. The child hears you read Quran and watches you read Salah and fulfills it with you because automatically Allah has kept within any child the power and ability of mimicking. The child will mimic. Follow, follow. You know, if you have children, may Allah bless those without children with children. Say, Ameen. Even if you're not married. The reason is that dua would include the marriage first. We are Muslims. You know that. So if there's a young man saying, you don't have children, make dua that I have children. You say, Ameen. He means, let me have a wife first. That's what it means. So it's a two in one dua, mashallah. So... We, mashallah, are given this responsibility, but we forget there are other factors. The schools you decide to send your children to, they indoctrinate the child, whether you know or not. The cartoons or the movies or the way you speak, you scream. The child grows up believing it's normal to scream, start screaming. You swear the child grows up believing it's normal to swear. But if that doesn't happen, the day the child is exposed to that, it will automatically feel ashamed. Hey, did you hear that uncle? A big swear word, FNB. Some people, for some people, that's a bank. But for others, it's a bad swear word, man. May Allah protect us. And then there's another child saying, what's the big deal? But that's a big swear word. Look at the contrast. You are neighbors, you live next to each other. For one child, it's a big deal to say the F word. And for the other child, they utter it as though it is salt and pepper in their scrambled eggs in the morning. <laughs> Allah grant us ease. Why? Because that is Allah. Allah has taught us that when you get used to something, you will consider it norm. So be careful what you are exposed to and what you allow your children to be exposed to. Be careful. And that's why we live in an environment where taught, choose a good environment. Shift your home if need be. If that environment is bad, it will be worth it because your children will grow up at least understanding what's good and bad because it's only up to a certain age. Once they clock a certain age, then... It takes a little bit longer to get them used to something negative. Say, for example, a youngster started watching porn at the age of 25. For example, may Allah protect all of us. It might take them, they'll feel guilty if they've had a good upbringing. But if they keep on doing it again and again, it becomes a habit. When it becomes a habit, it becomes difficult to remove it. But the guilty feeling initially depicts your good upbringing. And it depicts the fact that you're a believer and you are concerned about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what it depicts. Because if you're not concerned about Allah, you wouldn't be bothered anything and everything. There is no distinguishing between halal and haram. The hadith of the Prophet sallallahu says, when your good deed makes you happy and your bad deed makes you sad and regretful, it's a sign that you're a mu'min and a believer because your bad deed is making you regret. That's what it is. But when you have no regret over something bad you've done, it becomes habitual. Person who commits adultery for the first time, they can't sleep. Alhamdulillah, because they can't sleep because they want to go back to Allah, the tawbah. They want to turn. What was that for? What did I gain, etc. But when they get themselves into the habit, what happens? They don't even blink an eye. For them, it's like, oh, by the way, astaghfirullah. That's what happens. A person who has drunk or did drugs for the first time, it really bothers them. But after a while, they get used to it. The point is, my brothers, my sisters, humankind is created in a way that you, whatever you get yourself used to, you become that. So get yourselves used to good things. You want to do your salah. Initially, if you haven't been fulfilling it properly, it will be a mission for the first 40 days to four months. It'll be a mission. It's tough. Force yourself to fulfill your salah. Get up for fajr. When 40 days have clocked and you've done it for 40 days, pushing yourself, I promise you the 41st day comes. Before your alarm clock actually goes off, you're already awake and you turn it off without anything. Why? 
Allah created you that way. You got yourself used to something. Get yourself used to Quran every morning. Initially, it's a push. You got to push yourself. Push yourself. Initially, you must. Then what will happen? There'll come a time when your day won't be straight unless you've read Quran. Allahu Akbar. That is it. Allah says, you get used to something. خَيْرُ الْعَمَلِ مَا دِيمَ عَلَيْهِ وَإِنْ قَلْ Here's the hadith. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is saying, the best of your deeds are those that are done regularly, even if they're little. What's the issue here? Why regularly? The best of your deeds. Regularly. Because it habitualizes. It becomes you. It becomes your habit. People know you're going to enter the masjid on a Friday. That uncle, hook or crook, will be sitting in the corner. You watch. You come here 12 o'clock early, mashallah. But you're not the first one. Because there's someone who's gotten themselves used to that for the last 30 years. Where are you going to compete with that man? May Allah help us. I want to encourage myself and yourselves. Not only to get used to good habits and to eradicate bad. You know when you swear at home and you scream and yell at each other and you shout at each other and you've got no proper conduct. You got to be tough on yourself for a while and then it will become secondary nature not to scream anymore. It will become secondary. It will become then primary nature actually. That you know what this home is beautiful. We used to long back swear for example. I'm not talking about myself. But anyway. We're saying, for example, a person says, we used to swear at home. We no longer swear because we became tough and strong and the house is beautiful. We didn't used to compliment each other. The, the thank yous and pleases as Muslimin, Jazakumullah khair, etc. Beautiful words. Get used to them. Appreciate. You don't just come in, nah, where's the food? And then there you are. No, relax. Relax, you say, Jazakumullah khair. I appreciate it. May Allah reward you. Get yourself used to it. Push yourself. Force yourself. Go home. Show good character, conduct. It's not you. People will be surprised. But it's a better version of who you're about to become. Let 40 days to 4 months pass. There's no fixed time. I'm just giving you the, an average that people have worked on. And I tell you what happens. That home becomes a beautiful home. Because you worked on it. You want to quit your habit. Initially, it's going to be tough to quit that cigarette. Notice I'm giving you a light example. So it's heavy. But you cross that threshold of so many days and you have the determination to please Allah, to meet Allah with a beautiful statement that I quit this habit for your sake. Oh Allah, trust me, you, it'll just become nature. You won't believe you were ever a smoker. Nor will anyone else around you. This uncle used to smoke. Can't be. Impossible. That's a light example. Like I say, I could have chosen heavier things, but let's start off there. But even the other habits, you have a bad habit, whatever it may be. And you know what the bad habits are. You've got to be strong because the hadith tells you when you are regular upon something, it becomes you. So let's be careful. Similarly, my brothers, my sisters, when it comes to our children, we need to speak respectfully. We need to ensure that we guide them. We need to talk to them and befriend them and make sure we treat them in a way we would like them to become. People say, you want to talk? Don't talk in front of the kids. The kids are here. You want to undress? Don't undress in front of the children. The children are here. Nowadays, they don't care. People undress and dress in front of the kids and they say, so what, I'm the mother. What are you talking about? Where is the haya? I'm a mu'min. I need to instill in my children something. These values are being washed down like no man's business. We need to revisit that. It's a duty. I'm a mu'min. Allah's created these children upon fitrah. If they don't watch you going to the masjid or reading your salah or dressing appropriately or speaking properly or showing a keenness towards your Quran or towards a small moment of the day of the dhikr of Allah, if they don't watch you do that, they're never going to get those habits unless later on Allah wants them to come through. So many of us have changed later on in life. When we're a little bit older, that is also a favor of Allah. It's also a favor of Allah. My brothers, my sisters, appreciate these favors of Allah. Work on them. It's your duty. When you talk, when you walk, even with one another, your children are watching. The younger generation are watching. Today they're exposed to so much of evil. Why don't we expose them to so much of good? Keep your smile alive. Keep your goodness alive. Sometimes our children watch us tell a lie. We lie openly. And the kids, oh, that's what dad does. 
What do they do? The following day with their friends or with the school or wherever, or they, they get an opportunity. There's a lie. Because dad does that every day. But if you make lies an issue that is huge and it's a no-go area, the child will tell the truth even if they're going to get into trouble for telling the truth. Allahu Akbar. You see? So this is the gift of Allah. These habits, not just for kids, for us. Because it passes on. I tell you, and I'd like to end on this note perhaps. My brothers and sisters, each one of us has a candle. Or a baton. Or whatever you want to call it. Or let's be more precise. We have the deen of Allah. We thank Allah. What's your duty to pass it on? Primarily to whom? Your own family members, your children. How are you going to pass it on? Simple. If you are dedicated and determined and you have the help of Allah and you constantly seek the help and guidance of Allah, as we say, إِهْدِنَا الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ 17 times or more a day. I promise you, my beloved brothers and sisters, we become conscious of it. And then we enjoy. Because the children are there. Do you know there are people who don't want their children to mix at all in society and community because they believe that the minute you're going to mix, you're going to get bad habits that are going to develop within you. We have a small problem there too. Because when you're not there, those kids are going to have to mix with society. At some point, they're going to swim in the deep end. You're going to have to get them exposed to something. Teach them how to deal with the negatives. Don't remove them totally from it. Because they are going to need to deal with it. I used to say when I was a little bit younger, that you know what? Imagine if the world is so corrupt right now. We fear, how will our children cope? Right? Uh, we got to hustle and we got to do so many things and we got to navigate through the corrupt world and so dangerous. What's going to happen to our children? Isn't that the worry of the parents? Trust me, you got to leave that to Allah. If you haven't exposed them to all of that, then you've got to worry. When I say expose, expose with the intention of assisting them to cope and to know how to deal with, not expose in order for them to dive into. There's a difference. My brothers and sisters, this world belongs to Allah. He created everything that's here. And so He knows what's going on. He wants us to stand up and rise to the challenge. Rise to it. Don't lose hope. Don't become despondent. I promise you, we all say the world's become a bad place. Sign of Qiyamah. Qiyamah is near. Yes, those statements are true. But I want to tell you, there is hope in the mercy of Allah. Look at the masjid, how full it is. Look at where it is. Look at how it looks. As I was coming here, I just heard a little bit more about the masjid that they managed to pay what X, Y and Z and they managed to do that. And I said, that is the deen of Allah. It is alive. Here are the mu'mineen. We are alive. We are here. We have a concern. Today I'm talking. Everyone is listening. It's for me and for you. Don't we feel? Yes, correct. I need to do a little bit of what was said today. May Allah grant us that goodness. We should increase the love between us. And that is why when we have differences amongst us as an ummah, show your children and the new generation, the, those who are up and coming, how we managed those differences. We don't need to swear and shout and scream and belittle and call names because that's not a sunnah. That's nowhere near what Islam teaches. Even though you and I know and gloves off, there are scholars who do that today. Never mind. It's their weakness. And you know what? Excuse them, but don't teach that to your children. You say, listen, my child, if you differ with someone, you can register the difference respectfully without insulting the individual. That's it. Because you are part of an ummah. You are one family. Tomorrow, when disaster strikes the ummah, wallahi, we will have to stand up for one another, come what may. There was a neighbor, Muslim also, in one of the areas and he never used to greet the other neighbor why because he belonged to what he felt was a different sect of islam muslims both muslims but he says no we can't greet no greeting so one day there was a visitor who came across and he greeted this man with no response he said my brother i just want to tell you one thing the day the thugs come to your place the man who's going to rush to your assistance is this man who you're not greeting and then he went away and i tell you something struck a chord now, the brother comes to me and says, every time he passes, Salaamu Alaikum, bhai, what's happening? Are you okay? Everything well? He says, no, mashallah. Why? 
it hit him to say it's true not just thugs floods can come thugs can come any calamity can come an earthquake can happen a disaster can happen who's there the prophet muhammad peace be upon him says jibril alayhi salam continued to remind me about the rights of a neighbor so much so that i felt perhaps he's going to say when you die your neighbor inherits a certain share of it because it has to be so important to have good neighbors you got to be a good neighbor and have good neighbors that's your first port of call Obviously, we call out to Allah, but what I mean is physically from humankind, there goes. May Allah protect us all. So let's be responsible as an ummah. There is hope. We are growing. We have a lot. And inshallah, we have so much of positivity. Learn to love one another. Small differences you shouldn't take to heart. They're petty things. Let them be released. Don't worry. Never. That's my brother. Never mind. Those are my sisters. Never mind. Look what I said. You have people who say bad things. No problem. It's their weakness. It's their... Excuse them. You keep on doing good work. One day the people will see. One of the sheikhs, when he was told about differences and so on, he said very, very simply, he drew two lines. He says, you see, this line is skew. Instead of living your life saying this line is skew and, uh, they, they, and swear the person who drew that line because it's a skew line, all you got to do without talking, draw a straight line next to it and walk away. What happens? Anyone who passes up to the end will notice, say, hey, there's a crooked line there, but there's a straight line right next to it. The message is delivered. May Allah Almighty grant all of us goodness and forgive our shortcomings. And grant us all the ability to love one another truly. And may our hearts be pure and clean. Because as an ummah, wallahi, we need each other. Because that was the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ultimately, it's Allah who we need. But Allah has kept us such that with an ummah collectively, when we feel for one another as one body, that is the only time we will grow. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallama ala nabi